Cool. Thank you, everybody. Um, I'll keep this fairly brief because we're getting to the end of the afternoon. Um, and everybody's tired, and the rain got really loud for a little while, and so that was slightly disturbing. Um, I am supposed to be my colleague, Helen Raggett. Um, I was really just meant to be here for the vibes, was what we decided. Um, unfortunately, all y'all get is vibes, because I am not qualified to give anyone HR advice. I'm really sorry about that. Um, what I do have, though, is Helen's notes on the presentation that we were going to talk about. And what I was going to do was take you all through some of the resources that um, are on the Fed website that MGS has worked with, with Ponya and the Fed team to put together, um, just to highlight some stuff around around HR and about mental health at work for museums professionals. So hopefully the internet will actually play ball with me here. Awesome. Okay, I believe in you. Yahoo, huh? What? It's Chrome. Why would it have Yahoo as its main browser? Unbelievable. Um, so just a little background. Um, I am Devin, as I said. I work at Museums Gallery Scotland, and I am actually our senior partnerships manager. So um, they try not to let me uh, actually touch any of the HR stuff most of the time. Please type into this. Please type thing. Come on. Yeah. There we go. But this is something that we've been thinking about at MGS for a while, in that um, we are a smallish, medium-sized organization, but we actually have um, some pretty decent HR advice within our organization. And it's something that when I switched over to working at MGS from working in the independent museum sector, there were little things that just completely blew my mind. Um, there was, I had a whole timesheet situation. Um, back at the top. Yeah. Tippy top, tippy top, tippy, tippy, tippy top. Very, very top. Very, very top. Oh, it has its own special thing. Yeah, well, it's on oh, there we go. It has its own special thing. Sorry, I've only ever gone into this into the special link. Apologies. I'm giving myself away here. Um, so this is something that I've been thinking about uh, for a while and whether or not um, MGS should be offering more support for the sector in terms of HR and mental health at work for museums workforce. Um, obviously, in the last couple of years, this has become more important. Things have become just a lot more anxious. Um, and I think, I think something that's been really positive about that is that we're actually having more conversations like this about that. And I think that really helps. I think the conversations that we're now having around a range of areas uh, that touch on our wellness at work are important, and those have to do with conversations we've already had today around disability at work, um, around anti-racism at work, around inclusion. And I think all of that is actually part of this. Um, so in terms of the resources that we have here, I'm going to try and do this as a sort of double duty here. Can we see? We can see. The, this is the range of HR-based uh, resources that we've popped up on the website. Um, these have been compiled um, primarily for individuals, um, as the Fed is a, a membership body for individuals. Um, they may also be helpful for your organization if you are in a position where you can influence HR at your organization. That said, not everybody's there, and we recognize that. Um, so we will get to a little bit of what help we can give you as individuals going forward as well. Um, what we would like to do is highlight the importance of fair work across the sector. And we've been changing some of the ways we work in order to support this. Um, and I know Philip mentioned the government's commitment to fair work earlier. And you can see just here, this is a link to our fair work page on our website. Oh my god, it's going to take like 100 years to get there, but it will get there. Woohoo! Um, which overviews um, the fair work principles. Um, and also looks at what we're doing in terms of changing our practice and our expectations to make sure that museums are complying with fair work to the extent that we can. Um, this is 
I'm trying to find the appropriate word for metaphor, but I'm not there yet because it's the afternoon. It's a slope, it's a gradual slope perhaps. We're at the beginning of a gradual slope there. I'm gonna roll with that one. Um, but we are looking at how we can use um, our ability to offer training and workshops on this, but also our grants mechanisms um, to support this. But on this page, you can find a little bit of an introduction to fair work um, and then the framework and the five areas that constitute fair work, as Philip mentioned earlier. Um, it is really worth looking at. Um, and I think there are elements within there that, that are important to us as a sector to explore. But I think, again, we're at the beginning of this, uh, this little slope, this road, this journey. I don't know. My metaphors are not good this afternoon. I apologize, my friends. Um, so the rest of this section signposts to some organizations that are really good fundamental sources of information and support around employment practices generally. Um, and you might already be familiar with some of them. Um, but we have um, ACAS, which uh, has an incredibly complicated real name. So I'm going to look it up, actually. Look at this. What is it? It's called something that you wouldn't expect at all. It's delightful. Um, there we go, which is just like, oh, is, is that what that acronym works for? But it just is there. Um, but it's, it's a great resource. It has a whole range of um, pieces of advice that you can go for. It has really clear information, um, particularly around workplace rights, rules, and best practice for individuals and for organizations. Um, there's a whole range of resources, fact sheets, templates on there um, on all sorts of topics, including contracts, individual contracts, best practice in contracts, just in case your contract isn't there um, and you'd like to flag that to somebody, um, uh, in, around annual leave, around sickness, around recruitment, redundancy. It's really comprehensive. Um, they also have a helpline, which offers free confidential advice to talk through work-related problems and questions um, and help understand how the law relates to it, what good practice looks like, um, and any of the options that are open to you. Um, the other really valuable resource that they offer is dispute resolution. So where the part where you call them on the free helpline hasn't really helped and then you've had to speak to somebody about it and there's actually a problem um, for where the problem can't be resolved through your standard organizational processes. Um, Citizens Advice also um, offers a helpline for individuals, which is another route for advice around any issues that you might have. Um, Working Families, which is up here, um, is a really great resource for anybody who's experiencing issues related to being a working parent or carer. Um, they are an independent charity and they offer free advice on employment rights for parents and carers and around in-work benefits for families. So if you're looking at something around your rights on maternity or paternity leave, how parental leave actually applies within your job, and that is super confusing, I know, um, they are a great place to go for advice on that. Um, CIPD is the professional body for HR uh, professionals and people development, um, and it has a focus on championing, uh, championing better work and working lives. Um, a lot of the content is very professional focused in that sense, um, but it also has a good knowledge hub that covers some good practice around elements of, of employment and workplace practice. Um, and then finally on here, access to work is a governmental service which aims to provide support for people to get or stay in work if you have a physical or mental health condition or disability. Um, that can be um, grant work uh, to pay for practical support, support like equipment or other adjustments, advice around managing your health at work, um, or paying for communication support at job interviews. And where we were speaking a little bit earlier around diversifying the workforce and offering support for those who do have disability, um, if this is something that you are looking to move your organization to, I think they're a great organization to be in touch with in terms of understanding um, what support you can access if you are able to recruit somebody who does live with a disability and you would like to give them the best possible support on that. So in terms of well-being and mental health, um, we have um, a range of resources here. 
Um, it is really positive, we think, that this has become so much more prominent within the workplace um, in the last couple of years. Unfortunately, the flip side of that is that it's needed to become more prominent in the workplace in the last couple of years because people are struggling with anxiety on a daily basis. We are all a little bit extra stressed out and that wonderful ideal balance, that work-life balance, um, is just being completely crashed by the pandemic. Um, and Philip had some delightful stats on that to help us all go home and feel that at least we're not alone in having no differentiation between your work and, and home life, which is great. Um, but some of the resources here are really helpful. Um, MIND particularly has an A to Z of mental health, which has information around specific mental health conditions. Um, I don't recommend that in a like, let's do a self-diagnosis journey. That's not what that's for, my friends. Please don't. Um, but if, in fact, you are actually uh, managing staff or working with volunteers who are having mental health issues, I actually find it really helpful to help educate you about how you can actually work with colleagues better in that way. Um, Sam H is an absolutely brilliant organization that offers a huge range of information and resources around managing mental health. Um, they have some really great resources on um, wellness at work and what that means and what that looks like, um, and also on um, managing specific mental health conditions. Um, it, they also have some recommendations around those reasonable adjustments, and I think we talked about that a little bit earlier, and Laura mentioned it, but actually, if you're being a proactive manager, colleague, volunteer manager, going in there and looking at what those lists of reasonable adjustments are and actually anticipating those requests is a really helpful way of working, working in a supportive way within your organization, um, and I, I highly recommend the resources that they have on there. Um, Robertson Cooper is an organization that we believe has worked really closely with the CIPD um, around mental health stuff. They have a big focus campaign on what does a good day at work look like um, and, and how you can actually make that uh, happen more frequently. Um, some of their services and training are paid, but they do have a lot of online resources that can be quite helpful around that. Um, they also have um, extensive guidance for line managers on how to make um, being at work a better experience for everyone. Um, and they have a, an absolute ton of research on there that you can use to back up this approach if, in fact, actually you are trying to make changes and you're getting a little bit of resistance above you. Um, it actually is, is really helpful in terms of saying, no, this is why we're doing this, this is important, here's why, and they've got the research on there that you need. Um, and then the Mental Health at Work website is basically, as Helen says, a massive searchable resource which links to toolkits, fact sheets, et cetera, from a huge range of organization. Um, again, a lot of these are aimed at employers rather than individuals, but they can be really helpful um, from both perspectives and can help you find other organizations who offer some support on particular topics. Um, at, uh, so, just to move on from this, I'll leave that up there because there's no reason not to have it up there. Um, what I would like to do just with about five minutes or so as we head forward um, is if you have a device, um, would you please go on it to menti.com? And actually, I will type this in here to show you guys what, what is happening here. So, so it's www.menti.com. And I'm hoping this is going to work because I oh, that's that's beautiful. Hmm? Oh, oh no! Look at all of them. There we go. There's the real Menti. So many, so many W's. Perhaps not. So, it will ask you to enter in a code. Please ignore the one, two, three, four, five, blah, 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 blah. and you would enter in three, four, nine, one, eight, zero, oh, three, three. And then submit, which is always such a colonial patriarchal word. Um, <coughs> what I'm looking at here is asking you all for a little bit of help. Because this is the beginning of a conversation that uh, MGS started having with the Fed um, more than a year ago, which is how can we give better uh, HR and mental health support to the sector. And some of that can be through the Fed, but truthfully, some of that needs to be through us, particularly where we're trying to help organizations to work better to support their employees. Um, so in Mentimeter, what you can do is you can go in here and you can vote 
on um, what you would particularly like support on. And if you were just jazzed for support on everything, you can hit all fives. But that often doesn't help us to necessarily prioritize terribly effectively. So if there is something that you would particularly like support on on here, you can go ahead and put it in. Is it not working at all? Why would it be closed? It's clearly open thing. Why are you closed? Press C to open voting. Why would you do that? Why would you ever do that? It's literally never done that. It should work now. Go ahead and refresh. Sorry, everybody. There we go. Um, so thank you for that, Ellen, my friend. Um, so what we're looking at is what kind of stuff could you could you find useful in terms of support going forward on this? Um, would you like something on HR basics, basics around around rights, whether that's resources online, more extensive ones, more links? Maybe more links is not super helpful in that you're like, I don't have time to find all these links. I'm too stressed at work. Um, but stuff around politics, policies, uh, you know, what we use at MGS is usually what we can offer. We can't say it's best practice. It is pretty decent practice. Um, the, the original timesheet that blew my mind when I was like, wait, there's a formula that can calculate how much I've overworked? Oh, and here I actually am going to get that time back? Yes, yes. Um, that sort of thing, would that be helpful for you? Um, in terms of that more detailed HR support um, in workshop or training form um, for organizations to help your organization perform a bit better on that, um, would you like more information on fair work, on those principles, how they manifest, details of how uh, museums are potentially managing to integrate them? Probably it's actually more helpful if you get some details of like where museums are actually doing a terribly bad job on that, but we don't tend to run a like shaming culture in terms of our workshops, so we probably won't be able to provide that one. Um, would it be helpful for you to have some positive action um, training, something around inclusive recruitment. Do you understand as uh, when you're hiring how to use positive action appropriately within the law? Or do you think that there's some sort of mystical racism against white people thing that happens when, when you say positive action? That's not real, by the way. Um, and finally, would mental health uh, for museums people be something that you would like? Uh, relaxation techniques, stress management, mental health first aid at work, is that something that would be helpful to you? Um, if, in fact, none of these things appeal to you, we also have my final page, which is, go on. What else can we help you with? In terms of HR for you or your organization, mental health and wellness support at work, what do you most need from MGS? Um, it probably, probably the thing that you most want in, in, your, in your mind is not on that preceding page of agreement scales because I'm not actually psychic. Um, but if there is something that we can help you with, um, please feel free to, to pop it in there. Um, if you have any really basic questions, I can answer them. Um, I do not work in HR, though, and I will not try and uh, answer any complex questions. But if you have anything that you would like to ask me now, um, super, super happy to give a stab at it. Otherwise, what I will do is I'll collate everything in the mentee. I will bring it back to Helen, and we'll figure out with the Fed team the best way to actually answer those questions and share the answers with everybody going forward. But So that is me for now. Um, thank you very much. And I will try and leave this mentee slide open um, for at least another half hour or so, so that if you have any questions and you're thinking on it, um, you, can, you can pop them back in there. But as ever, please just get in touch with me if, if you'd like to follow up or if you, if you need our help with anything, we're always happy to chat. But thanks very much, everybody.